After much debate and much contemplating all of the options I had, I have an FJ Cruiser. It was super cheap. It has a busted motor. There's no hope fixing it with its chip cylinder walls. I have a Tundra, which you see on the bottom left. And there's a parts car forerunner available to me to get parts from. Why would I take these two vehicles and combine them and put into the FJ? Well, I want a challenge. I want to do this and I think it's going to be awesome, a great result. And lots of people are always searching for the V8 swap for the FJ. Now I've witnessed it only in this picture. A guy from like Saudi Arabia or another country over in the Mideast sent us this on the forums. This is my engine. Why would I take a 99,000 mile engine out of an awesome looking Tundra? Well, because it looks awesome on the outside, but it is rusting and breaking and falling apart underneath. This drive shaft just broke on me last week at the beach on the sand, just going over a tiny little hill. This is what it looks like underneath. This truck was from New York. Spent all its time in the salt up there. And you know, if you don't keep up on it, if you don't coat it and all that. I've only had it a couple of years and I did what I could. You can see the new exhaust, new fuel tank, tons of new parts. Now, let's get into how this swap is actually going to work. The idea is take all the wiring harness and all the electronics from Forerunner and put it in because it can run. There's a V8 Forerunner. It can run um, with the V8 engine. Obviously, the ECU from the FJ can only do six. So I'm going to run through this wire harness, the complete Toyota Forerunner wire harness, and show you. Fuse box, battery connections, then you have your front airbag sensor, crash sensors, okay, and then getting over here, this wraps around under the front curtain, um, and it hooks up to the, there's a cable there for the hood, popping it, and for um, lights, for the front headlights, and this goes through the firewall here, that's a rubber piece that goes through the firewall, and goes in on the right side of the vehicle, passenger side, by the, the kick panel. Now, looking from this end, the ECU is down there in the kick panel, then you go out of the firewall immediately, big thick cable goes around the back of the engine, and it, it's a Y, so it splits, actually splits three ways, here to the right, you can count up the um, injector cable, uh, connectors and uh, for the coil packs. So there's four of them on this side, four on the other. And going back directly from the Y is actually down to the transmission. So going around, going around, and oops, what's happening here? No. Why is it all cut? Why are there 30 plus wires that are cut? I had to do that when I uninstalled or removed this from the truck because I could not remove the engine and get the tranny down or move the tranny down to be able to get access and get those plugs off. I was at another guy's yard. I'd already spent six hours on it getting all this stuff and I just couldn't do it. So I said, screw it. I'll get a new transmission harness and hook it up and solder all those. It's going to be nuts. Okay. So then there's another harness. Um, that'll go around and it comes up the middle. It's, okay, so it's part of this and it goes into the starter and the air injection pump and uh, the sensors and the knock sensors all underneath the intake. You got to remove the intake. This is not that hard. Um, but the starter's in a, a bad place back there, really tight by the far wall. So then we have another connector that goes along a uh, harness that goes along the left side of the engine, the driver's side. And on there, it goes up and hooks to the air conditioning compressor. A couple other things up there, some sensors on the front of the engine. Around to the right was a start, uh, not the start at the, whatever. Alternator. Okay, so what's cool about the Forerunner, it's got all these extra features that the FJ doesn't have, like the downhill assist. Okay, so we got the fuse box on the left side, and on both sides, you got wires running along the um, floorboards that go to the doors. So there's a door open sensor and the door connection for the power window and all that. I got the Speedo out of this, big junction blocks all around. I actually took out and got two keys matched to this cylinder, 
if you want to pull this out, kind of get your plastics off, and there will be a spot to press that button. Press that, and you can pull that whole key lock out the front after you remove the coil sensor here um, for the chip key. Okay, I had to get the immobilizer and everything out of the Forerunner. My FJ does not have that feature, but now I will. The This is like a steering lock servo. Um, solenoid, I think. You know, pumps out the thing. And then we got more airbag control unit um, connections. Going along, of course, you have in the middle of the dash the radio, and then the Forerunner has this fancy second screen and the HVAC controls. I might convert to my other back, the, the regular FJ controls, but the radio I might be able to use. Four wheel drive switch, which I don't really need on the FJ. I might use it to turn on the ADD, which Forerunner V8 doesn't have an ADD, so we'll talk about that later, but that would be fine. Okay, so another airbag sensor there in black. That's like the main body. It might be like the yaw sensor or something, you know, if you roll over, um, it'll throw out the side curtain airbags. And going back past the um, park, those, those connect to like, you know, your shifter. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, low. Gear, and beyond that is some cool features hidden in the center console thing. AC power, awesome. Downhill assist, and your 12 watt, cigarette, 12 volt cigarette adapter. FJs in the very back have that converter, but this guy is gonna have it, I'm gonna have it <laughs> right there in the center, right under my armrest. So the immobilizer, moving on. Immobilizer with the key, need that. Uh, this is all matched, I have the matching ECU and everything, so this should work right out the gate with the keys. Okay, another airbag connection for the passenger. Then down here we have the four-wheel drive control unit. I already have a lot of stuff in the FJ, but I didn't know if it's compatible, so I took it. Um, tire pressure monitor. And moving back on around to the ECU, which we mentioned before. So this is a 4x4 four four ECU 4Runner 2005 with the V8. And coming back around the same window and lock connectors for the for the doors and the seat belt connects to the seat belt uh, airbag seat belt restraint safety systems a little mini explosion in your seat belt when you get an accident and you threw in a free uh, a jack for ten dollars too but this is the problem I found which I'll need to address looks like these wires are melted or melted through the sheath I think this part was by the exhaust I could be that's what happened possibly I gotta check it out so I want to go over this again and kind of go over all the different options I considered. So we'll just see the static image, but I'll be telling you about it. My thoughts along the way, I didn't want to buy, like pay $3,000 to LKQ or Junkyard for the 1GR FE because those things seem to be so in high demand right now. They're charging, like I said, like three grand for one with 100,000 miles, maybe 2,800, 2,500 for one with up to whatever 200 I don't I don't know about that like I can't I can't trust the engine they say there's a warranty but then they have all these fine print like it has to be installed maybe by a professional and then if you didn't change the water pump if you didn't do this if you didn't do that and you have to take it to a shop leave it there while they decide LKQ decides if they're going to repair it it could have hidden problems, I know. I know my V8 in my Tundra is awesome. It took me a thousand miles one day from New York to Florida. Okay, never let me down, never not started. Awesome engine. Now, when considering this, there is the Lexus GX460, which is basically a forerunner upgraded but it actually has the FJ Cruiser uh, manual shift for four wheel drive for a transfer case. So that would have been perfect. Uh, but those are really hard to find, really hard to find for uh, parts cars. And, you know, just to buy the parts themselves are pretty expensive, you know. And the Lexus just adds that little bonus on top. Then the other thing is 
some of those have um, some really cool features like air adjusting suspension and um, you know all the all the upgrades that Toyota possibly had at the time I didn't want to have to mess with um, the ECU and start faking signals and figuring out sensors and all that for all those added features to make sure that the lights on the dash weren't just going like a fireworks show and shutting me down into limp mode or something because you know it couldn't sense the um, air pressure in the right rear you know airbag so that's why I kind of went away from the GX 460 although that would have been a more direct swap I think now there is a problem with the 2UZ FE V8 from the Toyotas where you got the borderline of 2004 to 2005. 2005 added air injection pumps, which are a pain in the butt. It added VVTI, so you have the valves and solenoids and the sensors for that. And, you know, that's just added complexity. And so what's the 2005 Forerunner is the one I found with cheap access to all the wiring. I decided to go with it. And for now, with my V8, which is from 2004 and below down to 2000, Toyota didn't have VVTI or air injection pumps. So I can use that with the newer ECU, but the ECU is going to want to know, it's going to be looking at the sensors for the air injection pumps, and it's going to be looking at the sensors for the VVTI and adjusting all that stuff. I'm going to probably have to fake the signals from those things to get the ECU to run right or else you know I don't want to end up in limp mode because VVTI is stuck on the machine thinks it's stuck on um, retard or advance when it's not it's just a normal position because there is no VVTI right so that may be the only complication I have in this build and I would have loved to find a 2004 forerunner would be perfect for this engine but you know opportunity what happens and where it's at and all that you know just this is how it came to be so I think I'll, I'll think I'll be okay and later if I find another V8 for cheap that has VBTI from a crash Chandra across Sequoia I mean there's tons of cheap Sequoias out there that are um, totaled they are selling for parts cars and the V8 seem to be much cheaper than the one GRFE which is great also to get replacement engines now why did I need a forerunner ECU instead of a Tundra ECU because of the A750F transmission in the FJ. I wanted to keep that transmission and transfer case and all the drive shafts, you know, all the same and not have to make a custom transmission mount. Maybe it would fit, maybe it wouldn't, the A340F transmission from the Tundra. But I'm going with the newer transmissions, the five speed. And I just want to leave all that part stock. So the Forerunner has the A70, A750F transmission plus the V8 from the Tundra. So the Tundra has the other transmission. I don't want to swap that, leave it all in there. And so this is the perfect combination ECU from the Forerunner for what I have. Now, yes, the other reason is that the transfer case in the FJ has that manual stick to switch in for high, for low, and all that. The Tundra has, and the Forerunner, well, the Forerunner V8 is all-wheel drive. That's the other thing. Okay, so there's no front ADD switch on the Forerunner. The Tundra has electronic acti activator for the transfer case. So I didn't want that, and that's another reason why I didn't want that transfer case and that transmission. Although these things, if you look at them and you you match them up, you can take like the bell housing off of an A750 and put it on an A340. Anyways, I digress. A lot of details there to research. Let me know in comments if you have any questions about that. But when you see this build finished, you should be able to trust that you can get a Forerunner. Forerunner parts would love it if you could get the V8 engine and all the wire harnesses. And put that in the FJ. I could I didn't have the opportunity. The parts yard it sells the engines in big containers and sells them off to who knows where. They refuse to sell me the V8 with VVTR. Okay. So that's kind of the thinking that I went through on figuring this out. I know it's possible seeing the Saudi Arabia 
V8 swap picture. I think I have the right ECU. I got the right transmission with the engine. I know they fit together. Now the FJ starter position with on the bell housing is at nine o'clock, say, if you're sitting in the driver's seat. So it's to the left. The V8 starter position is in the 12 o'clock position, right between the two heads under the intake manifold, which is a pain. So this bell housing on the A750F will not fit the engine um, and match up. So I have to do get a V8 Forerunner bell housing and swap it onto my 750F transmission. So that is actually the last part that I need, which I just realized. So I'm gonna have more trips to the junkyard or ordering one on eBay or figuring that out. Maybe I'll find a um, trashed A75, A750F transmission that doesn't work. Someone will sell me for cheap just so I can pull that bell housing. So that, that may work perfect, but you know, you have to search the forums, you have to search on Facebook, Marketplace, and just get these parts. You know, search all the junkyards around. Luckily I have one that's pretty good. I wish I had more that I could go to that are self-service. Um, but I have, may have some opportunities with this guy I found that with a forerunner. So, what else is there to consider? I've already torn apart the entire inside of the FJ to get the stink and the stench of this flood of water that came in through the roof and leaked down the um, channels down to the floor and soaked the carpet and destroyed the interior. I've already taken all that out, put in sound, new sound editing, and cleaned the seat, put the seats back in um, soon. Got one, one in, driver's seat. So, I've got all that out. I've got the dash out. So I can do this full swap of the wiring harness, pop that all in there while the dash is out. I can take the FJ stock wire harness out and save it. What if I find another a crashed FJ with a V6 that I you know want to put in or a different project or you know something doesn't work out? I can do. I can go back to that and keep that harness. Although I could sell it for a lot of money. It's really hard to find FJ parts cars. So yeah, I'm gonna keep that just in case and use it as a reference as I install the foreigner stuff. So anyways, this is the beginning. I think that explains kind of the strategy. One thing, two things that are gonna be hard on this. I gotta make custom motor mounts for the V8, like adapt them into the locations to get over to the FJ locations and the exhaust. Am I gonna to have to get, uh, you know, modification to the end of the headers, you know, to point more downwards, or, you know, will I be able to hook up the catalytic converters and get the exhaust running how I need it? So those are the two kind of mechanical obstacles to get over and versus electrical. Exhaust and engine mounts. I may need to add an electric fan instead of the mechanical fan just because of space constraints. But generally, most engine bays kind of give you about 33 inches front to back on Toyotas. So keep keep looking for more videos. It might they might come slowly because you know as you know this project is going to take a while and I don't just work on it eight hours a day. I have a real job. I have kids. All that. But I'm really looking forward to it. So see you in the next video.